One of the things that we like about producing Muscle Car of the Week is the ability for people who are watching the show to leave comments and feedback. You know, put comments on the YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. Uh, we read all of them and we think it's kind of neat. A lot of times people tell us cool stories of similar cars that they might have had or seen. Uh, sometimes people have questions about the cars. Other times people straight up tell us things we did wrong and that's cool too. So today we thought we'd take a few minutes to look at some of the viewer comments and answer some of those questions and correct some of the things that we screwed up. So the first one comes uh, straight from episode 61 which was the uh, lightweight galaxy and the one thing we left out of that episode we kept talking about all the lightweight body panels and aluminum and fiberglass but we never said the weight of the car. Uh, and according to our research, uh, these things came in at about 4,150 pounds as a regular Galaxy. The lightweight versions were all the way down to 3480, 3490, something like that. So that's a great question, something that we left out because that was a very significant feature of the lightweight car. The next one comes from way back in episode two. Uh, the 69 Roadrunner 440 A12 car. Very, very cool car. Uh, I made a mistake and called the induction a six pack, where in fact it's called the six barrel on that car. Somebody pointed that out. Uh, one cool thing about that particular episode is that after we showed that video, uh, the first civilian buyer of that car was a guy named Les Willie, and he actually contacted us saying, hey, that's my old car and is there a chance that I can come see it in person? And uh, we didn't get a chance to arrange a personal visit, but we got some special photographs and, and sent some stuff out to Les, so we thought that was pretty cool. There's been a bunch of these cars that we've been able to connect with original owners or people that used to own them through this show. It's really cool. Jumping ahead to episode 30, we mistakenly called the 63 Galaxy a side oiler, when in fact, at that point in 63, it was a top oiling system in that 427, so that was a slip up on our part. Okay, next up, a lot of controversy on episode eight, which was the 34.2 mile Chevelle. And we made a mistake by showing the wrong build sheet in the video. We fully copped to that one. This is what the actual build sheet looks like. This car is highly, highly, highly documented, and to everybody's knowledge, it is a legitimate 34.2 mile car. And some things we've learned along the way is people said, you know, it looks too sloppy, the SS badge is upside down on the grill. There's a very long debate on the Yanko.net website about this very car and about some of the detail items that were screwed up potentially on the assembly line. Many people state that yeah, I mean, on the assembly line, people could have very easily mistaken that badge, flipped it upside down, screwed it to the car, and sent it on its way, because these things didn't take a long time to assemble, and maybe some factory worker was asleep at the wheel that day and just put it on upside down. To our knowledge, this car's never been apart, never been wrecked, never been restored. This is another one where we were contacted by an individual who claims to be the son of the original owner and presented significant evidence uh, to support that claim, and he had some additional facts and info about the car that only somebody that grew up with the car would know. And he pointed out that the badge is the way it was. So the debate continues. As far as we can tell, this is correct with the right build sheet. We apologize for showing the wrong one. And the car legitimately has 34.2 miles. Uh, but if you want to join the debate, jump on yanko.net and look it up. Jumping to episode 41, which was an L88 Corvette, sparked the other controversy of our Corvette's muscle cars. And we touched on that in the episode. Actually, no, a Corvette is not a muscle car. Uh, most people define a muscle car as a mid-sized car that's fairly lightweight with a lot of extra power. Hence your GTO, you know, your mid-sized sedan that seats people in the back seat that just has a lot of power and performance. Corvette has no back seat. It's a two-seater. It's more of a true sports car. However, um, all the cars that we feature on Muscle Car of the Week are from the Brothers Collection, and some of them, even though the show is called Muscle Car of the Week, we feel are certainly worthy of sharing with the viewing audience. So we're going to slip in a Corvette every once in a while. We might slip in a Cobra, some things that would generally be considered sports cars, maybe something that might be older than the Muscle Car era. Please don't get upset. Enjoy the show. On episode 20, uh, we were talking about the 66 
seven liter. And this is a Ford Galaxy. Um, and we said that Ford only referred to this one as a seven liter. They didn't refer to it as a Galaxy. Somebody pointed out on YouTube that it says Galaxy right on the side of the car. You know, so of course Ford calls it a Galaxy because it's a Galaxy 7 liter. Well, in reality, if you go back and look at the print advertisements from Ford from back in the day, all of the 7 liter stuff only says 7 liter in print. Nowhere on the page does it say Galaxy. And that's what we were referring to. Uh, of course, the car is in the Galaxy family and it does say Galaxy on the side. We were referring to the print. In episode 49, somebody pointed out that on the headrest of the Yanko Chevelle, it says SYC, but it's a Yanko supercar. So the letters are out of order, when in reality, uh, traditional monogramming says the tallest letter is always the first one, which is the Y. So even though it says SYC on the headrest, it actually does stand for Yanko supercar. This next one is a question we get almost every week uh, by some loyal AMC fans who say, look, you guys have shown Ford and Chevy and Plymouth and Dodge and Corvettes and everything else, but where are the AMC cars? Well, sit tight. Uh, the Brothers Collection has a lot of different cars in it, and there are some AMCs coming. Uh, we've got some good ones. We're pretty sure we're not gonna let you down. Bear with us. You have to sit through all the other stuff, but we'll get there. Another big question we get is, who are the brothers? And the, uh, the answer to that is going to be kind of vague. Uh, these are guys who are genuine car fanatics. They love all kinds of cars, but they don't want the spotlight. They want to be the guys who have the collection to look after the cars. And today, the best way for them to share these cars is two ways. One, of course, is through Muscle Car of the Week, where we bring you videos of the cars, introduce you to the car kind of up close and personal. The other way is through the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals show, which is in uh, the Chicago area every November. And the brothers have sent primo cars to the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals each year that that show's been in existence. And this coming year, 2014, they're gonna be unveiling two more cars that uh, are fresh restorations, both very special. I don't know that they will be there in person. The cars will be there, we'll show them to you. And if you wanna learn a little bit more, we have an About the Brothers Collection section on the Muscle Car of the Week website. But that's about all we're gonna say. So we'd like to take a moment to thank everybody for watching the show and we encourage feedback. Again, any comment that you see, if you see something that doesn't look right, have a question about a particular car, feel free to post it. Make sure you like our Facebook page and you can start a conversation about cars. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you never miss one. And we'll see you next week with another car on Muscle Car. Week.